Last week I reviewed a phono amplifier from Blue Horizon and it cost around a thousand pounds or so. This week I want to rein back on the price and look at something roughly half the price of the Blue Horizon. This one is from Moon. It's called the 110-110 LP version 2. And I've seen it on sale for somewhere around £450. So it's firmly in the centre of that budget price range. This is a low-key, low-vis, demure, quite shy looking phono amplifier. Small chassis, very low footprint and ideal if you don't have an awful lot of shelf space in your hi-fi. This little box spans 127 millimeters by 42 by 165 millimeters and weighs around one and a half kilograms. Now when you're setting up this phono amplifier to your cartridge and you're getting all of the necessary settings in place, you'll be faced with a bank of dip switches, which is located underneath the Moon's chassis. And dip switches, I have to say, are not my favorite method of forcing the settings on a phono amplifier. I find them very finicky. They can be very confusing, especially to hi-fi beginners. But I do understand the pros of using dip switches. They offer a minimal interface, they're simple, and they don't introduce too much noise into the sound signal, which is often the case when you find cheap and cheerful knobs and switches on the external fascia of a phono amplifier. Now to enable you to flick those dip switches into the correct place, you're giving a little stylus. It's called a dipstick and it's supplied by a company called Greyhill and that's actually supplied in the Moon packaging. Now you've seen an image of the dip switches doing their thing underneath the 110. But this is a fairly well lit image, I have to say. In real life, when you're actually doing this, when you're actually flicking those switches, the dip switches are relatively recessed and shadows play upon them. And it's difficult to see where the dip switches are sometimes, whether they're flicked to the left or flicked to the right. So it might be an idea to possibly say, shine a smart phone torch inside the little cutouts, just to make sure you've got your dip switches in the correct place. The settings include impedance, as you might expect, and they include 47 kilo ohms, 475 ohms, 800 and 10 ohms. There is capacitance loading, and that includes 0, 100, 330 and 430 PF. Also gain at 40, 50, 54, 60, and 66 decibels. There's also a user selectable curve, the traditional RIAA, but also IEC. The Walwart powered aluminium chassis includes four layer PCB tracings using pure copper and inductive DC filtering. It also features a socket for the 24 volt switch mode power supply and arrives in any color you fancy, as long as it's black. Oh, and it comes with a 10 year warranty. Now to begin the sound tests, I turned to Nancy Wilson, and why not? And her 1966 album, A Touch of Today, and the track, You've Got Your Troubles. And this album features an interesting challenge for any phono amplifier. It features a measure of compression to begin with. So while there's plenty of detail on offer, the upper mids are pushed right to the edge. This means that any hi-fi product that's not perfectly neutral will push this recording right into the bright zone and you'll know about it pretty pronto. And my first impression while playing the Moon 110, well, I'm not sure I've heard a phono amplifier that's been quite as neutral as the Moon for some time. It was a bit of a surprise and a very welcome surprise at that. There was no hint of the 110 forcing the issue here within the upper mid or treble zones. Instead, the moon took its foot off the pedal and let the music do its thing. Upper mids were not only balanced in terms of presentation, the low noise from the unit meant that the mid range was able to rope in more detail 
than I would have expected at this price point. What I mean is that the reduction in noise increased the 3D effect of the soundstage, so the music seemed to push backwards towards the rear wall of my listening room. As the soundstage moved backwards, the new space wasn't just heard as an empty void, of course, it was filled by new detail. So, on one channel, a quite frantic acoustic guitar strum added finesse and delicacy to the sound of the strings. With some phono amps, the acoustic guitar can sound restricted and a little forced. Let me elaborate. Imagine standing in a room, looking through a window and seeing a face on the other side, squashed against the glass. Now, as you stare in horror and before you reach for your phone to call the police, observe that face. Apart from the bent nose, the cheeks are flattened, the eyes look a little scary and the lips will be distorted. That's the equivalent effect that some phono amps can produce if all they offer is a flat 2D soundstage. The 110 LP version 2 gives, in effect, more room for details to manifest themselves. So, we're back in that room with this odd-looking person on the other side of the glass. Imagine that they slowly move backwards, the lips detach from the glass, the nose unbends, the eyes blink, and the face slowly emerges, offers form, structure, new depth, more detail can be seen, new subtle aspects of the cheekbones are visible for the first time, and hey, they actually look quite attractive. I wonder if they're free for dinner tonight. But enough shenanigans. Do you see how a 3D soundstage is actually important when appreciating delicate details? I then changed from a vocal jazz style to more heavy rock. Well, in this case, primitive prog, I would say, and the UK band T2 and the album It'll All Work Out in Boomland. I played the track Morning. Again, the result was a balanced output, with bass offering a wealth of information. Transient detail was here as well, reverb response and more but it was done within the confines of the mix without booming and dominating or affecting the mid-range. During the early part of this track, I was impressed, during a high-energy, rather noisy part of the sound, how the drums were kicking up a storm. The guitar was a beast of noise, yet the delicate cymbal taps were clearly evident, with enough space in and around to offer their own reverb tails. So what the Moon was able to give us here was a nice blend. On one side of the coin, you had the frequency discipline, everything was in its place, nothing was misbehaving, and on the other side of the coin, well, you had that more naturalistic tone. So while the moon was keeping everything in order, nothing sounded forced, nothing sounded strained or tense because of that discipline. There was still this naturalistic, easy flow to the musical output, which was just beautiful. So what do I think of the Moon 110 LP version 2? Well, the best compliment I can offer is that I often found my attention drifting away from this very review and becoming lost in the music I was hearing. Which is why this review took twice as long as it should have. Ten minutes would go by and then I'd suddenly click back into work mode, realising that I should have been making some notes. The 110 is thus an involving piece of kit, and one that integrates easily and efficiently into any balanced hi-fi system. Tonally, it's very impressive, and it has a real organic clarity, which is just, well, very impressive, especially at this price point, especially at £450. It sounds much more expensive than that, I have to say. If you're building yourself a top quality hi-fi system, you don't need to look to the heavens to find your phone amplifier, you just need to look to the moon. Well, the 110 LP version 2, that is. And that's me done. I'd just like to thank you for staying to the end of this particular video. Just to let you know that I am also on Patreon, and there's a whole raft of exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else. There's a batch of buyer's guides on there covering different subjects. The last one I put on there as I'm making this video was a CD. 
uh, buyer's guide. There's uh, some articles on music memorabilia and there's some features taken from my personal archive, which oh, haven't seen the light of day for quite some time, but they're over there. So check out the link below, see what you think. Thank you very much and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.